I don't know how, but I reviewed it. What's up everyone? Welcome back to ARTV. My name is John and it's time for a review of the debut EP 1981 extended play by I Don't Know How But They Found Me. I Don't Know How But They Found Me, often shortened to IDK How, is a musical duo consisting of Dallin Weeks X Panic of the Disco and Ryan Seaman X Falling in Reverse. This is now their full-time project, and this is an ambitious one because it actually plays out like it's an old band, and the recordings are being uncovered from the 1980s of this band that played on public broadcast TV but never really got their big break. Well, here is their second chance, and I have to say that it's been so much fun to see this roll out from the start. This was intentionally just Dallin working on the project, but he rounded up Ryan Seaman after he departed Falling in Reverse, and they put out their debut single Modern Day Kane in late 2017. It's a song that I absolutely love, but I love even more the follow-up single to that, Choke. It went viral in a sense because it racked up over 7 million plays on YouTube, tons of streams on Spotify, and then they landed a record deal in late 2018, signing with Fearless Records and dropping the single Do It All The Time. IDK Howe wrap up a sound that is like new wave meets alternative, and it's kind of glorious the way that it plays out. There's a nice guiding voice at the backbone of this EP that starts you off with introduction, and it announces the fact that it's on None You Jerk Records, and it's just a nice little addition, those little touches and the fact that when you hear this sound, go to the next or whatever, there's a lot of detail that's added to these songs. And also at the end of Choke, there's an extended edition on the EP, and you hear a clip that is actually sampling a 1973 film. I say film, but really it's just something that was filmed for the public broadcasting service over in the UK. It's lifted from something titled Lonely Water, and the quote goes, Only a fool would ignore this, but there's one born every minute. And I just like the fact that this was added to the end of a song that already felt kind of demented in many ways. The lyrics are kind of sassy, playful, and just dark, and it has that kind of humor to it. And not that that's why they included this sample here, it just feels appropriate given the circumstances. I know it may only be six songs in about 14 minutes, but it really does have an impeccable flow that never stumbles or loses its footing, even though it does have those breaks at the end of some of the tracks where you hear a longer extended outro. It's something that just fascinates and has Dallin's typical writing style. I think it's something that really made me appreciate both him and his collaborators such as Drew Folk that he worked with on this record because Dallin does have a very unique perspective when it comes to penning lyrics. I really appreciated that about 2013's Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die that he collaborated with Brendan Yuri of Panic at the Disco on and here it's added and supplemented even more. Choke is a song that really does just kind of grab you and pull your ear to the floor. It's something that definitely makes you perk up because it has a dark sensation, but also a vibrant, just kind of not gloomy at all type feeling. It's like you're walking on a sunbeam over hell. That is the best way that I could describe Choke. I'll admit that at first, Do It All The Time and its sarcasm was kind of lost on me. I didn't pick up on it, and even though I still liked the song, it wasn't something that I necessarily felt myself connecting to. But now that I see it as kind of a satire and kind of a con commentary on how a lot of pop songs play out, stealing your girl, all of these other things, it's actually something that puts a big smile on my face because not only is it uber uber catchy with the melodies and just the overall vibe and aura of the song, but the lyrics and the way that they kind of poke fun at an industry, it's glorious. It's hard for me to narrow down favorites here because I genuinely do like every single song here. It's one of those little EPs that is stuffed full of sounds and ideas that I could just see being expanded on so much more in the future, and that does give me even more hope for a debut full length from them. But here, just looking at what we're offered, whether it be Social Climb, a track 
that is honestly so engaging and charismatic. I can see Weeks as a vocalist here and the way that he stands out on that chorus in particular. They bring in the brass section and some of those shimmering synthesizers and drum work that's done in the background. It's all done so well and I love the fact that they're able to package it up so neatly and just leave it at our doorstep. Many of you probably don't need me to remind you, but Dallin Weeks was the touring bassist for Panic at the Disco for quite a while and the bass really does pop on a few of these songs. One of those being Bleed Magic that was released as the third song from this EP and while I didn't hear it until I heard the entire little project, I have to say that it's another exciting one that grips in a different way. It has a chorus that definitely stands out, but the bass line is what keeps me nodding along and really just coming back to it over and over again. Possibly my favorite song on this little EP is one that wasn't even released as one of the singles, although I think it should be hopefully in the future. Absinthe is the name of that one, and it talks about this strong alcohol, of course absinthe, which is something that you probably don't want to get your hands on. I did once and it absolutely kicked my ass, but here he talks about the fact that absinthe makes the heart grow fonder, playing on the whole absinthe makes the heart grow fonder phrase, and it's just a very smart tune that feels kind of like an invigorating anthem with the way that it opens up with those crying out vocals that might remind you of a Muse song in some ways, and then it breaks into it with that thumping rhythmic bass and those really kind of punchy drums. It's a track that really just makes me want to come back for repeated listens, and I could honestly see this making my year in best list for songs. Thanks. I don't know how, but they found me is a quote from Back to the Future, of course. And here, I feel like we're going back to the past with this little EP. It's definitely packed full with some gems, some ones that truly stand out, and I honestly don't feel like there's a bad song here. It's something that you can loop over and over again, and I don't have any genuine complaints here, any things to call to mind that I could say could honestly be tweaked in a huge way. There's a few times where there's a couple of lines that just maybe don't hit me as much as they wanted them to hit, but outside of that, maybe a few little musical things, this is a pretty damn nice little EP. 1981 Extended Play gets a 4.5 from me. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Make sure to check it out. I will link to the band's website so you can order this for yourself if you haven't already down below. And other than that, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks a lot for tuning into the review and leaving a like. I'm going to be interviewing I don't know how very soon, so if you have any questions that you'd like to see me ask the duo, then fire away in the comment section down below, and I will try and get to some of those questions for you. Other than that, check out a couple of recent reviews here. All of my socials can be 